The Airsoft Loadout. A lot of us are doing it right now. We're all building and refining our Airsoft Loadout, even though the pandemic and the lockdowns connected to it make it impossible for us to practically use it right now because in Germany the fields are closed. Have I been reworking my Loadout? No, it remained as it was since I started playing Airsoft. I've been playing Airsoft for two and a half years, so when I use this Loadout, which is my primary Loadout, it's almost like muscle memory. By this, I only mean my helmet, plate carrier, belt system and footwear. We will start with my footwear, which is one of the most important things in your loadout. I've been wearing Solomon Evasion 2 mid-LTR Gore-Tex boots. I've used these boots in airsoft, hiking and camping and they're still in perfect condition, which is important because you don't want to twist your ankle while playing. To my battle belt. If I'm running my belt setup as seen here, I run a velcro belt that I bought from Cop Shop. I then attach my claw gear laser cut EDC belt. I modify it with velcro so I can attach it. It's a perfect solution for me because it's very minimalistic and slick and it holds my pouches just fine. The pros of the system are obvious, but there is a negative point about the system. Depending on how heavy your belt setup is, it will cause your pants to sag down unless you pull your belt really tight which can be uncomfortable. Right up front I have a little carabiner hook that holds my direct action light gloves if I'm not wearing them at the moment. I have two Templar Skier fast magazine pouches on my left for speed reloads. Right next to them my Templar Skier dump pouch. It's nice and big so magazines don't fall out while I'm moving. On the right I have a direct action bottle pouch that fits either my Nalgene 1 liter Oasis canteen or my Nalgene 1 liter bottle. For Airsoft I prefer water bottles instead of water bladders, mainly for durability and simplicity reasons. If the mission or the event requires additional equipment like grenades, admin stuff or medical gear, I have plenty of space left to attach and still reach it. Now to my plate carrier. As many of you know, I love to use my battle tested direct action Spitfire plate carrier. I've been using this carrier also for two and a half years and it held up extremely well. Minimalistic and comfortable, at the same time, I will keep using this carrier for a long time. I use two steel plates made by Pentagon that weigh about 8 pounds or 4 kilograms each. Why? Because they're thin, makes it easier for storage, and I love the weight. I hate plate carriers that don't have any weight on them because they tend to not sit very well on my body and are not very stable. And because the padding of the Spitfire is just a thin soft shell, a foam plate would retain all the body heat, which in return causes me to get hot. With steel plates, I don't have that problem. Plus, it's a great endurance and core strength exercise while playing. And by the way, the soft shell padding in combination with the Velcro on pads are in my opinion a superior option in comparison to the 3D mesh lining I've seen on other plate carriers. On the front, I also use Templar's gear magazine pouches. Right next to them, I use a Tasmanian Tiger pistol mag pouch to hold my speed loader. I almost only use it when I don't have my Odin Innovation speed loader at hand. A Tasmanian Tiger tack pouch holds my Midland G9 that's connected to a loudspeaker push to talk unit by Kudio. I prefer this system because it also allows my teammates in the CQB environment to hear transmissions, including you, the audience. Plus I'm not a fan of having cables coming from my head. This keeps it a nice and slick one-piece system. On the other side, I have a Templar Skier general purpose pouch that holds my Leatherman multi-tool, my hex key set and other mission dependent items. On the back, I have a flat pack that can hold anything I need from extra water, food, rain or cold protective gear and extra ammo. In the CQB environment, I have a big red or blue velcro strip so my teammates can identify me as one of their own. And my name tape. And last but not least is my nutsack. HA! <laughs> nah, just kidding. It's a Centauron groin pouch. On the CQB field I keep my phone, wallet and keys in there to keep them safe from theft. On larger scale events though, I keep my mission dependent items like ammo and first aid in there. That's it for my plate carrier. This setup has worked for me these past two and a half years. Now for my head setup. It has remained largely the same except for a couple of details and additions. I still use a Mitch 2000, however I swept the one I had from SDS for a TC2000 by MSA in size large, because the SDS helmet was just a bit too small as I had it in size medium. In addition to that, I also run a Mitch 2001 
Mitch 2002 and an Opscore Fast replica. On my Mitch helmets, I'm still a fan of the Opscore x snape chin straps. The replica screw on and the jean mount I have now replaced with a strap on Nerodus Titanium, the strapping system I have made myself. I'll still use that dummy MS2000 strobe speed loader on the back of my helmet. But if not required, I'll drop it and slap on a replica VIP light with green light and an IFF IR beacon if necessary. Even though I'm able to make helmet covers in any desired camo pattern, if I have to plus up my camouflage, I'll take my French Army issue camo netting and apply it to my helmet. It has a brown and green side. For my action cam I still use the Contour Rome 2. However, I have now changed the placement of the contour, which I just like better, and I feel it gives a little bit of a better perspective when I'm playing. And a new addition to my loadout or MSA sortings. Now I know what you're thinking. Is Airsoft really that loud that you need those? No. However, I bought these second hand for another reason. It enhances my hearing, to a point where I have better situational awareness. If you're interested in buying Active Ear Pro yourself though, I think MSA Sordines are a little overkill. ZTAC or Earmores could do it as well. However, I have high standards, and I tested both and it didn't work for me. Now some of you may ask, what about your uniform? You're not running around naked, do you? <laughs> well, it's kind of a difficult topic as I'm a collector of modern uniforms from all sorts of brands and countries. And as of now, I have 17 uniforms in my collection and reviewing every single one of them would take way too long. But I'll go over my weaponry. As of now, I only have two weapons. One is a GNG CM16 SRL in 0.5 jewels. It features ETU and a MOSFET. It served me very well, both in the cold going down to minus 10 degrees Celsius up to the dry heat of plus 50 degrees Celsius. And I also have a GNG RK47E. And before I forget, the sling. I used to have the Tasmanian Tiger Gunsling, however, it was stolen. And for one and a half years I've been using this, the Carbine Sling Mark II by Direct Action. I can't tell you how awesome this sling is. It attaches via paracord, which is good for two reasons. One, no noise. And two, you are not dependent on any sling attachment points anymore. It has a minimalistic soft gel padding, which is of course not enough padding if you're going on a rock march and you're carrying a machine gun for days at a time. But it's enough padding for me so I don't have to worry about tucking my sling underneath the collar of my shirt. But all in all, that's it for my main loadout. Like I said, this has been for the past two and a half years and will be my primary loadout for Airsoft. If you want me to do a review on a piece of gear in detail that's shown in the video, leave a comment down below. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. My name is Ikafir Tactical and I'm out. Adios.